Hi, it's uh, James Clark here. We've just um, finished our t-test in a previous tutorial and here are the data on the screen showing the t-test results and we observed that the two-tailed t-test was significantly different and we've entered a star accordingly on our graph and of course our legend and our results section would report that. Um, but what if you have three sets of data? Here's a similar data set with group A and group B and now we have a third group, group C. Uh, group C may represent uh, a drug inhibitor, it may represent some kind of intervention to protect your tissue or your subjects from any effects of uh, the changes observed in group B, or it may just be a completely uh, different set of um, experimental conditions that you want to see uh, the significance from the other two. Um, of course if you're planning experiments like this you need to understand experimental design and all of these need to be run at the same time interleaved among each other with the same conditions. You can't just do um, experiment one week and then come back a month later and do a third group. You'd need to include um, more replicates from group A and group B. Um, but here we've got three sets of data uh, group A, group B and group C and we've got unequal sizes. We've got an n of 7 in group A, an n of 12 in group B as before, and now we've got an n of 10 in group C. We can plot the graph and you can see the graph here with our standard deviation bars and it all looks quite interesting. There may be some differences going on here but we can't test that just by looking at the data. Um, just as an aside very quickly, um, a few people ask how do we do standard error, uh, standard error of the mean in Excel. I'm just going to click on this little cell here and you can see of course standard deviation is a built-in equation in Excel it's just equals STDEV and then you highlight the cells of interest in this case we highlight all of group A and that gives us our standard deviation standard error is this equation here which um, you can see on the screen it's the standard error is the standard deviation which is small s divided by the square root of the n number um, in most of the spreadsheets I set up, I automatically set up this mean, standard deviation, standard error, and n number at the bottom or the right or the left of each uh, column or row of data. And you can see I set this up so that is standard deviation of the range. n is a count of the range, and you can see I'm just selecting the entire range, and it's counting how many cells have numbers in them, therefore giving me an n number. And then between these is standard error of the mean, which is the standard deviation which is C17, this number here, divided by the square root SQRT of C19, and in this case C19 is my n number. So this gives me the standard error of the mean. And you can use either the standard error of the mean or the standard deviation to apply your error bars to your data sets. So I've chosen in this case to show uh, standard deviation. So that's just a little aside. So we're going to go and do an ANOVA now on these data. Um, there is a slight problem with Excel. Um, it's not a problem that they actually thought about, I don't think, when they designed the software. But uh, you probably know that if you're doing an ANOVA test within biological data, there's no point in just getting the ANOVA results, which might well tell you there is significant differences within the data you want to do a post test and you need to do a post test on the data to determine which groups are different from which groups and I'll demonstrate that now these are our data three sets and we're going to go to our data analysis button and this time we're going to choose ANOVA single factor in this case I'm choosing single factor because the single factor that is changing is whether it's in group A, group B or group C it's three individual data sets recorded at one time. If I was going to include time in this data set, so you've seen these um, done in our PRISM demonstrations on another um, movie, but you'll see there where we're comparing, for instance, two groups over time, you would use your ANOVA two-factor without or with replication, depending on what the data set were. So we're going to use ANOVA single factor and click on OK. Once more we get our Excel box and you'll see this is a bit simpler actually in the t-test box it just gives you one input range so I'm going to select all of these data and that's my input range and you'll see it's asking whether it's grouped by columns or rows well I've grouped by columns you can see column column and column so I'm going to click on the columns button and asking again it's going to say have I got labels well yes I have I've got labels in the first row and now it's asking where I want to output my data. Well, I've got room on the side of this spreadsheet, so I'm just going to output the data onto the side by clicking on the output range and then highlighting 
a range. Um, you do, I did this before with the t-test. You can highlight any size you want, just one cell if you want, and that first cell will be the top left-hand corner of your data, of your results section. So I don't have to select an entire range. You could just click on one cell. I'm just selecting the range here for um, illustration. So I've selected the range and I click OK. And now it's generated our ANOVA single factor data set. Um, as before, it's squashed everything up ever so slightly, so I'm just going to expand some of these. There we are. So I can actually see them all on the screen. Um, and there we have it. Brilliant. So uh, here is our ANOVA data. Um, and what it's doing is it's doing an ANOVA analysis of variance between group A, group B, and group C. And what we're hoping is that the p-value of the ANOVA result between groups is significant. If the p-value is significant, we can then go on and do some post-tests. So we look down here between groups. I'm just going to highlight this section. So we look there between groups. And we see here the p-value is 4.781 times 10 to the minus 5. Well, I can immediately click on this and choose it as a number. I don't want it as a um, scientific nomenclature, so I'm just going to give myself lots of decimal places. Here we are. And you can see that our p-value within our data set is 0 0.0000 blah blah blah. Anyway, so that's very small. So our our conclusion from this is there is significant variation within our three groups. Therefore, we can say that we can do a post-test on these data. So how do we do a post-test? Well, we do exactly what we did before with the t-test. We choose two of our groups and we compare them. We choose another two groups and we compare them and do the rest. So I'm going to do that very quickly just by clicking on the screen now. So I go to data, data analysis, and I go down and choose a t-test. Okay, now this is um, interesting to remember. We choose to do a two-sample t-test assuming equal variances okay and we're doing a two-tailed t-test the reason we're doing a two-tailed t-test is I'm not hypothesizing that one mean is greater or less than the other I just want to know whether they're different so I'm not trying to say group B is higher than group A although I can see on the screen it probably is what I'm asking is are they different either way up or down so I'm choosing the two tests, two tailed um, t tests, and I am assuming that they have equal variances. Okay, we know that the data set probably will have equal variances, but we're going to assume that is the case. So we're doing that again as we did before by clicking on OK. We then choose our variables. You can see I've been playing, so the variables were already selected. So I choose group A and group B. We have labels, and I'm not going to choose a new output range. I'm going to choose a new sheet, and this is going to be GRPA versus GRPB, just in case I get a bit confused later. So we choose Group A, Group B, and we press OK. We go back to our ANOVA data. I'm going to leave that there for the moment. I'm going to do another two sample, including equal variances, and now I'm going to choose Group A versus Group C and again leave everything the same and change this to group A versus group C done and then finally we come back to our data set we do our third post hoc analysis where we choose group B versus group C so we choose group B and then versus group C so let's just make sure group C is selected there again choose labels and this is now going to be group B versus group C and back to our data. So we don't need to do group C versus group B and group C versus group A because we've chosen the two-tailed test we don't care whether it's gone up or down, we don't care either way and we've already done the test between group A and C and group B and C therefore we can go back to our data. So we've got group A versus group B, let's just interrogate these data now. Here are our data set, again it's all squished up so let's do what we did before and expand it a little bit and have a look at our data. Well, it's choosing our means again, and we know these are correct with the n numbers of 7 and 12. If you're worried, just go back and check 7 and 12, and the means are correct. We go down through our data set, and we look at our two-tailed data, which are here. And we can see that our two-tailed data are telling us 0.0154. So according to our t-test post-test, the differences 
are significant. We would guess this because, of course, in our previous um, tutorial on t-tests, we used exactly the same data set and we came up with the same conclusion. However, let's think about this a little bit more carefully. We do need to adjust the significance to avoid making mistakes, making an error when we're doing many comparisons, okay? You've probably heard of things called a Bonferroni post-test or a Bonferroni correction. Um, you've also heard of Newman Cools and all these other types of post hoc corrections. Well, we're going to use the Bonferroni correction as the simplest one to do in Excel because it is just a simple number. Okay, so we normally set significance at 0 0.05 so a 95% chance of being correct, okay? The Bonferroni correction is very simple. It just divides that 0.05 by the number of comparisons, okay? So we're using three comparisons. We've got group A, group B, and group C. So we now change the threshold of our significance, although we state it's 0.05, we divide 0.05 by three, giving us 0.0167. Okay, so I'm going to write that down here, 0.0167. This is our new significance point, okay? So we can type in this box here, a quick true or false equals is this number less than this number. True, okay? We've done a simple equation, we've asked the computer, is this number less than this number and it says true. Since it's saying true we can say that there is a 95 percent chance of group A being different from group B so we can go back and we can put a star on our ANOVA data and say that there is indeed, let's put a little text box there, between group A and group B we can put a star stating that they are significantly different how about, and let's get rid of that little box around there, that looks a little bit horrible. So we get no outline. There we are. How about group A versus group C? So let's go back to group A versus group C. Uh, again, this is all a little bit squished up, and it's given us a number here. Let's go and have a look back at our formula, and we have to copy those two numbers from here. And we're going to paste those two numbers into here. And this time it's telling us that our number, which is 0.03, it doesn't take a, uh, a neurosurgeon to realize that that is not lower than this number. So we tell ourselves that it is false. So group A is not significantly different from group B, it's from C, sorry, so we do not put a star on group C. And now the killer question, is group C significantly different from group B using our Bonferroni correction? So we go back to this one here, we highlight our cells and expand them and we go back and we paste our data. Again, is our number here, which is ridiculously small by the look of things, so let's just go back to number and give it some more decimal places. Is this number here significantly lower or actually mathematically lower than this number here? It's saying true. So we go back to our data and now group C is significantly lower than group B. or significantly different, but we assume by the look of the graph that it is lower. So we choose text box and we put a little symbol of any kind in here. I'm just going to put a little at sign because I am not going to bother looking for any, any symbols and turn the outline off. So now we can report um, these data. There's no fill as well. There we are. Now we can report these data in our legend, in our results section, to say that the ANOVA was significant and a Bonferroni corrected post test t-test indicates that group B is significantly higher than group A and group C is significantly lower than group B. So that was uh, a quick whistle stop tour of basic statistical analysis using ANOVA and a Bonferroni corrected t-test for a set of data. Of course if you've got four data sets, five data sets, six data sets, you just repeat the t-tests with the correction until you get all the data you need. Hope that helps.